I'm interested in understanding how mutations uh, are actually expressed in the sense that uh, we generally think of a mutation and we're taught in all of our high school and, and undergraduate courses that the effects that we see of a mutation are entirely caused by the, the, uh, the effects that it has on the DNA, so what we'd often call the DNA lesion. Um, but in fact, we know that the effects that mutation have can actually be, can be modulated by um, a number of things, including how those organisms are, are reared, so our environment matters, what we eat, and the kind of environment, how cold, how hot it is, basic things like that, but also, in some sense, who we are, what we call, in, in genetic parlance, the genetic background of the organism. And to give an example, uh, I could have a mutation that maybe would cause some kind of disease in me, but that exact same mutation in some other individual may have no effect at all. They may live completely normal, healthy lives. And so one of the things that we do is we try to understand these genetic background effects. And so we study sets of mutations uh, that have a, a variety of effects on, on, in this case, on fruit flies. Mo mostly we look at the wings of the fruit flies just because they're very easy to do it, uh, to, to, to look at. But, um, and we study how putting that very same mutation into different, what we call genetic backgrounds, be like just different strains, um, how those phenotypic effects are different and try to understand why they're different, exactly genetically what's going on that, that makes that interaction between that mutation and the background so important. The work on genetic background effects, I think in particular, we're, we're now coming to realize now that there has been a lot of these genome-wide association studies in humans really trying to nail down some of the genes that are contributing to human diseases, it's become pretty clear that in a lot of cases, even though we know that these genes have genetic, uh, a genetic basis, that we really can't account for as much of the genetic basis as we expect, even though we are sort of looking at all of the different variants in the genome. And part of the explanation is it's believed that these alleles interact with the genetic background of the individual. So again, it's just like in my fruit flies where we study a mutation that affects uh, the wings and in one background it's a short wing and the other one it's a long wing despite having the same mutation. Similarly, there might be certain uh, variants in the human genome that in, in some individuals it may uh, increase the susceptibility to a disease and, and, and lead to that disease or in part lead to that disease uh, um, while in other individuals they will, they'll live perfectly healthy lives. Um, and so in that sense that, that sort of work might give us um, I'd say a glimpse at this, at, at this stage, hopefully a glimpse into that. And I, my hope is actually to spur other people to do these kinds of, of, uh, this kind of research in other systems as well, because it hasn't really been taken to the, uh, um, the level that it needs to, to really understand that kind of interaction.